I got a question from Kim Gibson. She's got Ouch. another mailing question. Oh, I like or, mailing questions. Or list like question. Mailing. Are we using a full land value as the assessment value? Do we mail to trustees and organizations? So two questions there. What value do we use to base our market our... value? Why the assessed value? What's going on there? Yeah, assess, well, assess value rarely could be correct, but most of the time is a disaster. I mean, what Mike, do they assess what, your house at? Mike, Mind what do you got to be rude? Why you got to be rude to Kim? Maybe she's new to the business. Who, Maybe. who is rude? Me? I mean, <laughs> no, he's just being matter of fact. Matt oh. or of fact. Matt oh. or of fact. Wow. And now for tonight's you... lanky matter of fact segment. Matt, Holy just say it the way it is. Holy crap balls. I'm gone two freaking days, and, and you guys are <laughs> now, this is like uh, the worst comedy act ever. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, oh like come that. on. It's the matter of fact segment. I love it. Oh my God! We're gonna have that from now on. The back matter to Kim's of fact. Question: What was Kim's please, question? Please, Matthew, in thirty seconds or less, please explain to Kim why we do not use assessed value with the county. Ready? Are you gonna put a clock on him again? Yeah, here we go. Ready? Here, hold on. Ready? This will take four seconds. Go. It's almost always demonstrably wrong. Oh. He even used the word demonstrably. He should get like a three-second credit. Yeah, no. Three-second credit. County assess value, they go up and down depending on who's elected as the assessor. Like, that's not where you want to be, right? You want to go take a look at, go take a look at Land Moto, go take a look at the lands, go take a look uh, at Facebook, find out what people are selling it for, right? That gives you all the keys as to what you should be buying it for. Um, that's far more important than what some elected guy, you know, says that it's worth. Now, that's more annoying because you can't just go pull a list from Data Tree and look at the assessed value. You could do that, but it's it's a recipe for a wasted mailer. You're either going to be you're either going to get a very high rate of return of people who want to sell because you way overpriced it, or sometimes you can way underprice it. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not how you want to base your pricing. Mm, I like it. Dave LaFay, you are hearing correctly. He says, "Am I hearing correctly that I should be mailing in state in larger states?" I mean, I you think can't. if you you can start with your out of staters. If you get through your out of staters, you could you could sort your Colorado list by zip code and figure out who lives two or more hours away, and mail those people. And then if you're having good luck in the subdivision, mail them all, like yeah. Matt Forbes said. It depends. It it depends. depends on where you're at, man. Right? Yeah. Like. I'm not doing that work. I'm going to mail it everybody. I feel great about it. I make money when I mail. The more I mail, the more I make. So I'm good at I'm fine with it. If I'm just starting out, like when I just started out, I definitely did only out of state. I did tax delinquent. That's what everybody does. But that's what everybody does. Oh. Ooh. The downside of that? Ooh. That's what everybody that's, does. That's not what uh, the 27 listeners on this show do. Well, I'm just, you know, I don't care about in-state or out-of-state. I mean, yeah, like, you can argue with me all day, like, if I'm mailing somebody who lives down the street, like, there's no way they'd sell it at that. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're behind in their mortgage and they need 4500 bucks, and, and I'm magically offering 4500 bucks. Like, you don't know the reasons these people sell. They're selling way cheaper than, than what you're going to be able to sell it for, but they can't go sell it for that. That's the thing you got to understand. That's the model. The model is no real estate agent is going to want to go take a listing for $9,000 or $4,000, right? So you don't know. Maybe they've tried to sell it for two and three years, and they're like, you know what? No problem. You want to offer me 500 bucks for this property? I'll take it. I don't want to deal with this thing anymore. I don't want to pay taxes on this anymore. Like right. We don't know unless we give them the opportunity to – get in touch with us about buying their property and send them an offer. I like it. Great answer. Very answer. Great, answer. Great answer. That's the matter of fact segment. Mm. Matter, mm -hmm. matter of fact mm -hmm. segment. We have a, <laughs> we have a comment from uh, Demetrius Jones. Man, she had two parts to her question. Oh no, did she? Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry. Oh, Didn't yes. mean to blow up. Didn't mean to blow up. Um, do we, do we mail to trustees? and organizations. Matt, uh, Mike Zano, what do you do? Do you mail the trustees and organizations? 
you talk about LLCs, like organizations yeah. like that? Yeah, I mail LLCs. Um, trustees, I mail them as well. Forbes? I actually have always excluded corporations until recently someone sort of slapped me and was like, what the hell are you doing? You know how many properties we buy from people like that? So I now I included them today for the first time. Um, but up until today, I just to what I had always done, right? Because I don't, I you know, I don't want to go bother mailing other land investors. But again, it like that thinking is really small. It doesn't make sense, right? I like so. it. Uh, I do both, except uh, I have my VA scrub out all my friends. <laughs> you not... think you know my business name? What? Good luck. Yeah, right. I'm not gonna mail Zeno Investments. Uh, I got Zeno him on Voxer. I got him on my. Yeah. I got him right eager. here. Yeah, right. I can't believe that I've spent so much time doing that. Like I, I, it's funny that that is Kim. It's funny you asked that question because literally today is the first time I'm like I don't have to go scrub for LLCs and then do a search for Inc. and then to go do a search for this and a search for that. Like I'll just go. <laughs> The whole list, because so, who care? Here's a question for you guys. I was thinking about this today. What if you work a subdivision? It's a very large subdivision. You've been there for a really long time. Mm. Uh, do you take out your prior buyers? So let's say you uh, let's say you obtain a new list. Let's say you obtain a list of the subdivision once a year. And I had mm -hmm. 10 cash sales there last last year. Mm -hmm. And I sold to these people. Uh, I'm mailing the new list this year, a chunk at a time, a couple hundred there, a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there. Do you take your prior sales off that list? No. I don't. Kind of interesting to think about, work. though, right? Way too much work. It's too much work. But I've had that question before as well. It's a good it's a good question, right? And it yeah. might save me eight dollars, but I'm out. <laughs> yeah, eight dollars, but then all the time to figure out who they are. Oh, uh, Kim! Kim wrote in again. Um, I'm asking, what does full land value mean to us? Now, there's a good question, Kim. The county treasury list I have provides full land value and net taxable value. I'm trying to understand what I do once I've determined vacant land. So oh. you you don't need those numbers to determine your offer, basically. Still the same situation Matt was talking about in the matter of fact segment. You basically need to look up comps in that very area you're going to mail, listed comps, comps for sale, sold comps from land sellers on land moto and other sites, and then that. So you really don't have to over complicated and if you really want to it's like it's the analogy people give to like you could learn all the ins and outs of your car or you could just drive the car right it's you know if you want to go in and have that deep analysis of why the county values things certain ways and and all of that that's certainly uh, you know valuable information to know more about land but it's not necessary to buy and sell land yeah i'll I will answer that differently, and, and this is I hope I don't come off rude, Kim. Um, you ask, I'm asking, what does full land value mean to us? It means nothing to me. I mean, that's the answer. I don't care what the assessed value is. I don't care what other people think it is. I care what I can get for it. Now, that number I care a lot about. So if I know, because I've looked on Land Moto and all the land sites, if I know because I've been doing it for a while, that I can get $4,000 for this property, then I'm going to go offer 1000 bucks, And that's just the math, right? I don't care if the if the if uh, if it's valued at 8000 or 2000 Like, that's irrelevant to me. All, all I care about is what I know I can sell it to. I don't know if that, if that helps. I think it does. It may not help. I'm generally not very helpful, to be fair. So I don't know. You're a very, you're a very helpful man, very helpful gentleman. Um, Great Barrington. Yeah, I mean, you know, Proxy, here's Proxy. the thing. Like, Proxy, Proxy. 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 here's the other thing that's kind of a challenge about our business, right? Is full land value uh, 
six months ago in this business mm -hmm. is a lot Very different good. than full land value today. Yep. So it takes constant analysis of the market on these land selling websites and on county mm -hmm. websites. You can pull you can pull sales data on a lot of these yep. county websites to figure out, oh, what did Matt Forbes pay for this property last month? Danger, Will Robinson. And right. uh, you know what did Danger. Mark Podolsky? What did Mark Podolsky pay for this property last month? You can see what I paid to buy it, right? But be very right. careful about what you think um, I sold it for, right? That one you well, got to be careful about, right? Because if I record a deed and you've been and a person's been paying me for six years, you're going to see what I sold it for based on six years ago pricing. Right. So there's a little bit of danger there, but I love looking you up, Bosman. I love looking up Zeno. Hey, where are you at? Where are all your properties at? Hey, would you pay? Sure. Absolutely. I've never Ooh. actually done that to you two, but I've done it to other people. <laughs> Stay back. Stay back. <laughs> Stay back. Oh, that's funny. Uh, that's all right. Funny. Awesome. Darren Nichols says he bought three properties from an LS LLC. Yeah off his mailings today. Yeah, that's why I feel super dumb, Darren, right? Because like, because these are all these like little preconceived notions we have in our head that we carry with us for years and years in this business, even though they're dumb. Like, why would I do an LLC? Like, why not? So good job. Yeah, that yeah. just proved that what I did today was correct. 